Hello everyone, welcome back. Good to see you all again. What is new at Universal Studios Orlando? Well, luckily, since the last time we've been here, there are a few new things to show you. Let's get to it. But before we begin, we publish theme park videos on this channel all the time. So hit that subscribe button and that bell notification button so you'll know when another video is ready for you to view. In addition to the like, general new things that we're looking for, there's a specific thing we're keeping an eye out for and that will be any evidence of Halloween Horror Nights. So right out of the U.S. zone, that's where we were. That's why we didn't have our mask on. But right before we enter Battery Park, we have this strange looking building uh, or hut I'm not sure what to call it but uh it is air conditioned and like room for one person i have no idea what this is for i don't think it's related to halloween horror nights i'm just clueless on this it's very unique though well nikki was asking some team members for some clues on this thing but for now i think it's just going to remain a mystery and I think a lot of you realize this now, but anytime you see me without my face mask on, I'm usually in a U-Rest zone where you're allowed to take off the mask or we're at a table having some food and water. And here's another new structure, very near Central Park. It is actually Central Park Crepes. It's not open yet. It's soon to be open though. And uh, let's go check out the menu. This little crepe stand very much I think a spot Nikki would love to hit up sometimes. In particular, I know she would like this chicken and goat cheese for $7.99. Hold the mushrooms though. And the menu, perhaps something for me, a smoked brisket for $7.99. And if uh, you're looking for some vegetarian, again a dish for $7.99. So you have your savory and your sweet. The sweet down here is going to be a lemon blueberry for $6.99. A strawberry hazelnut for $6.99. And a cookies and cream for $6.99. You like crepes, right? Absolutely. How about the rest of the menu there? Sounds awesome, honestly. The goat cheese and arugula, uh, just no mushrooms. That's right. I'm allergic to mushrooms. Uh, but the lemon blueberry yeah. sounds really, really good. And also the vegetarian. And I can have a brisket. Yeah. This might be a new go-to spot for us. I know. I'm super duper excited. Sweet and savory. Oh, that's us. Oh, yeah. I'm sweet and you're savory. Sorry. I'm the sweet one of the two, right? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll continue around the park somehow because, quite honestly, after reading that board, I'm a little hungry. I know, right? Me too. And speaking of crepes, you have an interesting, funny story regarding that. Crepes induced labor in me. <laughs> Which is weird because I, we had breakfast one morning before I went to work. Right, and Which, I was already kind of overdue. Yeah. And um, yeah, so we went to breakfast had, and I had crepes. I hadn't had crepes in forever. And yep, that day I had our daughter Caitlin. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> for me, it induces labor. <laughs> and here it is. You guys have been wanting physical evidence of Halloween Horror Nights inside the parks. Here it is the tribute store getting ready to have its facade put up so exciting oh look at this now we think it's going to open later this month for retro merchandise right that's right probably won't add the actual hhn 30 merchandise until later but we're going to keep an eye on this see if it does open later this month for that retro stuff now i know what you naysayers are going to say you're going to say that doesn't mean halloween hard ice is happening that they just want to sell some merchandise and to that i say pitch posh it's happening and that's the first sign okay we're gonna head into Diagon Alley right now to show you guys something you have been requesting me to show you and I can't believe the year is half over and I have not shown you guys this yet but I'm gonna make up for it today and you're gonna see it and to see this very special item we need to step inside of Ollivander's and here it is, you guys asked for it, so I'm giving it to you. This is the 2020 limited edition one special collector's item. And it's $70. And they do this every year where they put out a special collector's wand. And I can't believe I didn't do this earlier. There was a little thing happening that prevented me to get to the park, so maybe I shouldn't be too hard on myself. But here it is, what do you guys think? I think it's gorgeous. Of all the wands, that might be the one that I wanna buy. 
And it is interactive, I that, should note. That is true. Yeah, I really, really like that one a lot. The handle is just beautiful. It does look like something you would want. Be nice, and maybe Santa will bring it to you this year. <laughs> well, Nikki, you are being a good girl this year. <laughs> if you keep it up, maybe Santa will bring that to you. Come on, Santa baby. <laughs> or just use a spell on your, with your old one, Accio new one. <laughs> See if it works. It looked like it was under some type of protective spell glass. Yeah, protective enchantments are uh, keeping that thing from escaping. Yes. <laughs> now, I already know a lot of people are going to ask, can you buy that wand online? And I'm going to defer that answer to Nikki. So, no, you can only get it at the parks. Here. Yes. There is one more thing to show you here, kind of new for the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. I don't know where it is. I have heard tell of this, so we're going to have to just wander around and ask some questions. See if we can find this mysterious item. Well, the new unique item that we are searching for, not here in Diagon Alley. Which we, I'm shocked about. I know. Me too. You'll understand when you find out what it is. Exactly. So, eventually we'll make our way over to Filch's at Islands of Adventure, where we should be able to find this item. You know what guys, I think it's time to have some fun. So we're gonna make our way over to MIB. I will challenge Nikki. Lower score has to buy lunch. In addition to trying to best Nikki with the score, also the Laughing Park Hopper. She's always challenging me. She might have better scores than I do. I'm an easy one to beat, I mean. So I'm gonna record my <laughs> score today in Laughing Park Hopper. Send me yours and we'll see who outdoes who. Eventually, one day, I am going to run into the Laughing Park Hopper here in the park, and we'll have a in-person battle. Well, I did it. I beat you. <laughs> Not by much. With my, one of my lowest scores ever. Uh-huh. I got pictures to prove it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, the thing is, we, we, ra we ran into a viewer, Scott. Yeah. Uh, so we, we jumped in with Scott and his car, and uh, it was on the red track. Yes, it was on the red track. And I hate the red track. None of my tricks work for the right track. So that's why I got one of my lowest scores ever, but still managed to beat you. And I got the bonus. <laughs> and I missed the bonus. I don't even want to say my score. I'm not going to say it. And when I, you're going to give me the footage from your iPhone, yeah. I'm not going to put it in. <laughs> it was that bad. It was pretty bad. I was like, dang, his score was what I normally get. I didn't crack half a million. So we'll just leave it at that. But if you're ever in the parks around this area and you see me, I'm more than happy to go on to the ride with you. We'll just take a quick peek at the haunted maze being built here by MIB. One of the hopefully 10 houses they'll have this year. That house they're building by MIB and the tribute store construction, so far the only evidence I can find of Halloween Horror Nights in the park right now. But uh, every day we get closer to an announcement. I looked last year and it looked around mid-August is when they announced the scare zones for Halloween Horror Nights. So, like I said, every day we're one day closer to official announcements. Well, we've made it back to the DeLorean here, which in a recent video I did say, I think I made a mistake. I mentioned that this was not from the first movie because it had the hover uh, craft conversion and all that, but I was pointed out by several people that it does make an appearance at the very end of the movie when Doc shows up from the future that's when it has the hovercraft. So technically, this car did make a minute or two appearance in Back to the Future 1. Well, that makes one complete lap around studios. Let's head over to Islands of Adventure now and keep an eye out for that very special Wizarding World item we're looking for. I don't know if it's noticeable walking down Hollywood Boulevard, but I feel like the crowd level's a little higher today, Nikki. I think so too, especially when we were coming in, it really seemed like it was picking up a bit. Yeah, the car, you know, the wait for the toll booth was longer, the wait to get through the hub was longer. I think most people, though, prefer to start their day at Islands of Adventure. That's very true. It was recently named the number one theme park by TripAdvisor. That's awesome. So, I think people start there first. <laughs> I think it's pretty hilarious. I'm talking about crowd levels being higher and pretty much no one was in the shot. I just did. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. Another thing. I've been lazy today. Okay. I didn't shave. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can tell. No. But I didn't shave today. Yeah. 
can't even tell. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was my thought process was, you know what? Most of the time I'm wearing a mask anyway. I'm taking the day off from shaving. <laughs> is it itchier not shaving and wearing a mask? Actually, it is not, but I did shave late last night. Okay. So it's not like, it hasn't been a full 24 hours. Gotcha. More like 12. <laughs> I just want to let you know that that Wizarding World item that we're looking for, you can get it here in the Universal Studio store, but I'm going to delay showing you what it is until we get over to Filch's. But one thing is you have to ask for it specifically. It is not out for display. But let's get over to Filch's eventually and we'll show you what I'm talking about. I'm chatting with the premiere as we're going in between parks. Chatting and vlogging all at the same time. The thing is, we're always in a park on Sunday, but I do my news and rumors on Sundays. I post that. So there's no way for me to like really be at the home, you know, chatting. This is the best I can do. And my big Thanos thumbs, <laughs> I'm pretty slow. But it's fun. We are now in the 11 o'clock hour, which means it's time for us to get a little bite to eat. Today, I think, Confisco's. They do not open until 12 p.m. So let's go in the U.S. zone and check out the progress of the Jurassic Coaster. Uh, back home in a U.S. zone. I love these spots. I'm a bit surprised they're not used as much as I would anticipate in the break from the mask, you know? You know, there's Nikki. Nikki's working on my IG right now. And I think we'll go over closer to the lagoon and I'll show you the Jurassic Coaster. And I think I mentioned this in a previous video. There's only one or two more sections of track that need to be laid. We're almost at the point where the complete track is laid out and then they can start doing some other things. Well, they're already doing other things, but a big milestone is to get every section of track in place. And we're almost there with this coaster. Okay, okay, I've teased it long enough. Let's head over to Hogsmeade, to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, and show you guys this elusive, unique item that is new to the parks. The one place you do notice the crowd levels, of course, the Wizarding World and Hogsmeade inside of Filch's to find this new cool item, which is Hagrid's umbrella. Now they do not have this out on display. You have to specifically ask to see this and the cost is what, about $70, right Nick? Yes. Well, Nikki, what's your reaction to this cool new item for sale here in the Wizarding World? It's adorable. It is. 70 bucks. Now it's good for like a sun parasol, but do not use it for the rain. That's right, it's not waterproof. So, good for the sun, bad for the rain, so-so for magic. Well, it's a great place to hide your snapped wand. So to summarize, you cannot get this in Diagon Alley. You can get it at the Universal Studios store here at Filch's, and then also the trading company at the front of Islands of Adventure. But remember, you have to ask for it. It's not out on display. And now we can go have lunch at Confisco's. Something new just recently added to Confisco's is an upstairs dining for pass holders. Uh, along with that comes a little special menu item for pass holders as well. But you have two options if you're a pass holder. You can eat upstairs inside or you can eat out on the balcony. We're wanting some air conditioning so we chose to sit inside today. So the exclusive menu item for pass holders up here is the tandoori lettuce wrap and that would be $13. But Nikki and I have our own little secret for eating at Confisco's. What we like to do at Confisco's is just come and order the appetizers. So we're gonna get the loaded nachos and the chicken quesadillas, which we both love. I find it's a little cheaper way to dine at Confisco's. And plus, we don't want big heavy meals. Just the little appetizers should hold us over until we're ready to leave the park. So the loaded nachos are $10 and the chicken quesadilla is $12. So we're saving a little bit of money. If we would get two entrees, we're talking spending at least 17 bucks for an entree, upwards to, you know, maybe 20 bucks for an entree. And now it is time for Rick's quick food review of Confisco's appetizers. That's right. <laughs> but before we get to the food, let's talk about the ambiance. Yeah, the yeah. special seating area for, for pass holders. Yes. Now what's the deal with this? Because of uh, the changes that had to be made due to these circumstances right now. Right. Not a lot of space downstairs because they had to cut their capacity. They said, oh wow, we have all this space upstairs. Let's utilize it 
and give some uh, pass holder benefits. I love it. I love the symbiotic relationship between Universal and really going out of their way to please their pass holders. Yeah, it, it was really nice up there. Uh, we were the first ones in, but when we left, it was full. That's true. Which, and it was funny because last time we came up, I, they told me, oh, no, no, there's already two parties up there. You can't go up there. And then and now they've added more seating Yeah, or something. I think it was like five parties up there at once. Yeah, they were small parties, though. So yeah. maybe it was just two giant ones yeah. last time we came. But a nice little perk for being a pass holder now. Yeah. Uh, they'll see if it remains permanent. We'll have, see how things go. Right. But I know when I was talking about the menu and everything, it, it, it kind of seemed like maybe I was cheap. <laughs> Like, um, oh, we're just gonna grab some appetizers. But to be honest, we really like Confisco's appetizers. Yes, and two completely fills you up. We couldn't even finish it. Yeah. Now, what we had today, we recently tried before because of the limited menu, they didn't have your favorite, which is the artichoke dip. Right, that's usually what I get there. Yeah. So, yeah, I had to jump off that and try something new, and I'm glad I did, because those nachos are incredible. Those are some elevated nachos. Yes, and he kept taking like all the best pieces and then like wiping them off. I'm like, why are you taking Gosh. all the best ones? That's an overshare. No, those are not the nachos you get for your buddies at the football game. No, that's for sure. Elevate, that's for an elevated palate like yours. <laughs> yeah, it's not the nachos that I got over at Jurassic Park the oh, other no, day. Oh <laughs> no, no, These were really good. And, yeah. and the quesadillas are good as well. I enjoy yeah, those. Seriously, right? Good combination. So it's a good way to get some good food inside the park is to do the little trick get the appetizers yeah and you save a little bit of money but as we were dining we learned something you, you found something out on the interweb i did it is national ice cream day so we need to go find some ice cream okay um i know there's ice cream in diagon alley i don't want to go way back over there we'll yeah. see if toon lagoon has its ice cream open or not which i don't think it i is. know there's ice cream in city walk but let's explore a little bit but we will not leave without getting ice cream and showing it to you guys. <laughs> That's my pledge to you. I'm only eating the ice cream for them, Nikki. But we're not eating it on camera. <laughs> not gonna happen. All right, all right. We won't eat it on camera, but we will show you what the ice cream is and where we got it from and how much we paid for it. Is that a deal? That's a good deal. Feels like we have more people in the park here at Islands, but not so much that it feels crowded just enough to give the park some good energy. Well, look at this, Nikki. There's a place that actually says ice cream on the front. Hey, and it's open. I don't want to eat the first ice cream I see. Why not? We'll put a pin in this. We'll come back to this, I think. So this place in Marvel Island is cups and cones. You can get vanilla, chocolate, or Dole Whip. Oh. And they have ice cream floats. Sweet. I think I want this, but I do want to check out Toon Lagoon first. Okay, and it's all soft serve, right? Yes. Okay. I think we'll end up back here, but I do want to check out the other spots. Now, Toon Lagoon does have Kathy's ice cream. I have not noticed this being open since the parks reopened, though I have had ice cream here before. And it is not open. It's telling me to go from whence I came from, back over to Marvel. Sometimes the first spot is the best spot. <laughs> Luckily, we didn't have to walk far from Kathy's over to Marvel and Marvel and Kathy's. That's right. So, plus, I could stand to burn some calories since I'm about to take in a lot of calories. But wait a second. I just got some more information on National Ice Cream Day. Any calories of ice cream you have during National Ice Cream Day does not count against your daily intake. Feel free to eat ice cream, guys. A dipped waffle cone is $5.99, a waffle cone is $4.49, and a cup is $3.99, and then $1.19 for your toppings. M&M's, Reese's Pieces, peanuts, Oreos, strawberries, caramel, whipped cream, stuff like that. Wow, fancy chocolate ice cream in a cup. I have really outdone myself this time. Actually, they were out of a couple of toppings that I wanted, so just going to keep it basic right now. Okay, let's dig in before it becomes a milkshake. Couple things of note. You cannot have a Dole Whip on ice cream day. That is not ice cream. <laughs> it's a sorbet. Nikki didn't have anything. No. Why is that? I have to be careful with too much dairy. <laughs> yeah, doesn't agree with her, so. No. I have to double up and have all the ice cream today. <laughs> I just have to take it easy sometimes, that's all. But as we're sitting here eating my ice cream, a look at the top hat. 
This top hat is pretty high. Like I said before, I think it's gonna be between 150 and 170 feet high. So lots of good views of this top hat from all around the park. I gotta do it, we're so close to it. Here's a gratuitous shot of the Incredible Hulk roller coaster. go guys i think that's going to end our day at universal a random day sort of yeah but uh we did find some evidence of hhn yes we did we did a ride mm -hmm. found a cool like haggard thing sure enough had some ice cream for ice cream day it's been awesome okay. went up to confisco's i'm walking away with a present you are so all in all a good day yeah and with all that being said don't miss the magic don't miss the fun don't, don't miss the, the magic, magic don't, don't miss the fun, fun. hi i'm marvin and i'm Nelly. don't miss the magic don't miss Thanks for watching Rick's Flix, and now it's time to relax. Alrighty, it is time to thank you guys who are supporting the channel. First up, the newest Flixsters on Patreon, DSMJ34 as a Vice President, Jose Reyes as an Executive Producer, Amanda Kilner, a Supporter, Robert Walker as a Supporter. And then we have you guys who have bought us a cup of coffee or a butter beer recently, Alex and Jennifer Cullen. Dustin and Mary Heisel, Devin and Mandy K, Sarah's Beetle, Prudence, Annie G, Removed, Brandy and KB, and Al Prasad. Thank you guys so much for buying us a cup of coffee.